There he is. Hey, good morning. How are you, man? Doing well. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I've, I've missed you. I've missed you too. Last week. I know. I got. Not, didn't happen. So I got. I got caught up at the shop. I was all stressed, and then yeah. I just. I couldn't. I couldn't make it. But here we are. We're here. Do you hear me okay? Because yeah. I'm doing the headphone thing this week. I can. Yeah. I, I'm doing the headphone thing too. Am I good? You're good. All right, Excellent. sweet. When I heard the playback of one of the weeks, it was very echoey, and I was so far away. So, no, this. I like the I like the headphone thing. The microphone's there, nice and crisp. Right. I don't have the wireless. Sound good. I got to get, get up to date. I'm old school. Ah, uh, you know, you're doing all right. Yeah. I can hear you. That's all I care good. about. Good, good, um, good. So, this week, I thought we would talk a little bit about like who do we go see when we have like an injury pop up, right? So I have a ton of friends who are runners and I feel like no matter how many times I tell them to go to a certain place, like maybe I say, okay, you've got, you know, a knee issue popping up, go see Mike. They either like, I don't know what the deal is. They just go to their primary care and then the primary care is like, oh, you got to go get surgery or like they'll go to like an urgent care and yeah. they have like an Achilles issue and the urgent care is like, oh, yeah, you got all sorts of crazy issues. So you're going to need to like you chop your foot off. You're done. You're toast. You can't do anything. Um, don't run ever again. <laughs> don't, you can't run ever again and yeah. we're removing your foot. Um, so like – I have, and I have a lot of friends who are like kind of elite athletes too. So like I know a few friends who are really good at running who go to like a chiropractor all the time or they go to like a PT every week or they go to like a massage therapist and like they have all these kind of tools in their toolbox and I just kind of have to wrap my head around like what all those different things are for and why would someone go see a chiropractor or go see an ortho guy you know that type of stuff yeah this is a great question so so there's like a it's a lot to unpack i can understand but i know like you you know you probably get people in and then you can send them out to these various places if you need to um exactly so so maybe just we can start with like what if I'm a runner and I get hurt, who should I go see first? Like, okay. just like a general injury, like I like I've got a knee pain or an Achilles issue or something like most runners have. Yeah. So, I would say someone like me, or a physical therapist, or mm-hmm. a chiropractor. Nowadays, with the chiropractor training and physical therapy training, there's a lot of crossover. There's some really good chiropractors that I know. And there's some really mm-hmm. good physical therapists that I know. There's also some really bad chiropractors that I know. There's also some really mm-hmm. bad physical therapists that I know. So you want to make sure whatever, yeah. whatever you're saying is good. But I want to right. backtrack that for a second because years ago, the old system was whether you're sick or hurt or anything, you call your primary care physician, right? Mm-hmm. It takes you two weeks to get an appointment with them. You go in, yep. you say, yeah, my knee hurts here when I run. And they say, okay, stop running, take Advil and then go see a specialist. And there's another two to three weeks go by before you see the specialist. Then you go yep. in and most times it's not operative. So this orthopedic surgeon like, you got knee pain? Yeah, keep, stay with the ibuprofen, still don't run, go see a therapist. Now it's another yep. week or two to get in to see the therapist. And there's just like, now you like have to three months of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it was yeah. very inefficient. And it was very unnecessary. You mm-hmm. know, primary care physicians are there to keep us free of disease and make sure we're gonna stay alive, right? That's their role. They don't right. are not trained specifically on soft tissue injuries, and they don't always give the best advice. But okay. it's also not it's not in their wheelhouse, right? So if you came right. to me because you want to know how to lower your diabetes, like I wouldn't, I can't prescribe you medication for that. <laughs> I can't, I don't deal with the disease process like they do, right? right. So we all right. kind of have our roles. So mm-hmm. that's the old school system, and a lot of people still think they need to go to their primary care physician first. 99% right. of the time, you don't need to do that. So mm-hmm. 
the, the, the short answer is go right to a soft, a soft tissue specialist, which would be someone like um, mm -hmm. our, ourselves, a medically trained one that can evaluate um, and kind of triage the situation. Mm -hmm. And also because maybe 3% of, less than 3% of the, all the running injuries I've ever seen end up needing a surgical consult. Running injuries typically okay. aren't traumatic yeah. and don't need surgery, so you don't really need and that you don't really need to go see the specialist. You don't really need to go, um, you know, see the best surgeon in the world because you have some lateral knee pain every time you run over ten miles. Because it's right. most likely not a surgical issue; it's a functional issue that we'll be able to help with better. So don't go through that old system. So get yeah. right in and check with anyone's listening. Check with your insurance company. Well, we do that. So if you would call our office, our patient mm -hmm. care coordinator will answer the phone, take your insurance information, call the insurance company on your behalf, and say. Okay, they're going to commit for PT. You know, what's their copay? What's their deductible? Do they need to know? We ask all those questions. And very rarely right. do we need to send someone back to the doctor. And I think the Got whole it. system's getting better because they know it's an efficient way to do it. Because those are just wasted doctors' visits. And doctors are busy enough; they don't need to have their waiting rooms clogged right. with people with minor musculoskeletal issues. Right, right. And do you find like? I don't know if it's uh, like gotten better over the years or whatever, but do you find like a lot of your services are covered by insurance? Yeah. Yeah. yeah like I don't have to sure. pay out of pocket. No, but there's certain things like um, like laser, and if we're using our anti gravity treadmill just for running, that's not covered. It's not medically necessary. So there's certain mm -hmm. things that we can do as um, part of our treatment that may not be covered, and it's a minor surcharge. But yeah. most people have some sort of physical therapy benefit in their plan. The problem mm -hmm. is so many of us these days, including myself, have high deductible plans because we want to lower our monthly premium, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. real quick, if we can talk about that, because I think that's informative. Some people sure, don't even yeah. know their, yeah, most people don't even know how health insurance works. But if I have a nope. $3,000 deductible, right? And I go to see, well, let's flip around. You have a $3,000 deductible. You call mm -hmm. my office to get an appointment with me. We're going to do that benefit check, call your insurance company, figure all this out, and then we're going to come back to you and say, okay, Eric, great news is you have coverage, but you have a $3,000 deductible, which means the insurance will not stop paying until you've dished $3,000 of your own money out of your pocket. Yeesh, yeah, that's yeah, tough. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot of shkrodol, as they say in the province, right? <laughs> I don't even yeah. know if I said that right, but I think you nailed it. I think you nailed it, yeah. Sorry, sorry for all my Italian friends if I messed that up. But uh, yeah, so that's a lot of money. So even though you have coverage, because a lot yeah. of us are choosing these high deductible plans, you're still paying a lot out of pocket. So what we're seeing a lot nowadays is that people are just choosing to not even use their insurance for stuff like this. And they're basically yeah. using it more for, you know, major things, surgeries, Yeah, like a just-in-case situation, yeah. Yeah, you know, sometimes yeah. that's financially better for the patient, sometimes it's not. So we just try to counsel mm -hmm. them on it. Um, yeah. So the fact of the matter is, you can come directly to a therapist and or chiropractor. You can mm -hmm. most of the time is covered, and depending on your arrangement, um, what kind of plan you have, it may cost you mm -hmm. as little as, you know, most people don't have less than a twenty-five dollar copay these days. Um, but okay. it will cost you yeah. as little as twenty-five, or depending on who you see and what you have done, it could cost you up to like a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars a visit, depending. Okay. Usually somewhere, gotcha. usually, usually somewhere between seventy-five and a hundred, I would say, for a visit. Okay, got it. So, quick, quick question: We talk about like chiropractors. Do you send? Will you send someone out to a chiropractor if they come in? And what type of issue would that like chiropractor be able to help with? Yeah. yeah. So it's a really gray area, and that's um, you know. I, I very rarely send someone out to the chiropractor because I feel what we do, we can achieve the same results um, as a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. It's a totally different approach. I have. If I have someone that's got like, some real structural spinal issues and I'm not totally comfortable with my um, spinal manipulations, like popping and cracking the spine, if I really yeah. think they need that, and we do have, we actually have someone on staff now who's a trained osteopractor. So he's a doctor of physical therapy with an osteopractor training which is similar to chiropractor so now we've got someone like that in-house but if mm -hmm. i wasn't comfortable with it then that's who i would send out to a 
chiropractor. But chiropractors yep. are also treating soft tissue injuries. Chiropractors are dry needling and doing Graston and taping just like yep. we are. So there's a, a couple of chiropractors who I really um, I love what they do professionally. And if we were on a table side by side, most people wouldn't know who was a therapist and who was a chiropractor because there's a lot Got of overlap. Yeah. So it all depends who you're comfortable with. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, the chiropractors are much more than just snap and pop like they used to be. Um, That's so, what I think of when I think of chiropractor. I think of like, I'm yeah. going to crack your bones, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it's slightly different training, slightly different mindset when you see a chiropractor and a therapist. But, you know, if they're good and, and you know, what they do, you're going to get the same results. Um, so it all matters who you're comfortable with. Of course, I'm biased to the physical therapist and our approach just because that's who I am. That's what I've been doing yeah. for 20 years. Yeah. Um, right. But it, but it doesn't mean someone should avoid. If they have a good relationship with their chiropractor, most likely they're getting um, what they need. And some of the yeah. older chiropractors may refer. We get a lot of chiropractors that refer to us because they're, you know, if, if structurally they did what they needed to do and it's more, you know, maybe a little more soft tissue, a little more exercise progression, returning to activity, I think we're more equipped typically in a the physical therapy office to do that. Not all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so we still yep. get referrals. Um, but either one, you can go right to them. Got it. Got it. What the heck is an osteo, an osteopractor? <laughs> what yeah, is yeah. that? Man, we got to get Greg on here to talk about it. So he's uh, yeah, yeah, he's up in my Plainville office. So he basically has a very chiropractic type of advanced training, so manual therapy of the spine. So he can mm -hmm. snap and pop, as we all, yeah. you know, most of us think of chiro chiropractic. He can do all that. Um, you know, so he does a lot of things combining manual manipulation of the spine and dry needling and exercise correction. So very similar mm -hmm. to um, a chiropractic philosophy, so similar training. Got it, got it. No, I know, um, I know that if, if yeah. any chiropractors are listening, they might say it's not the same. And it, it might not be, but it's just the best way I can describe it. It's pretty, yeah, got it. It's okay, it's cool. And so what is like a orthopedic person going to help with? So like I have a lot of folks who go to like, the primary care and then the primary care sends them to an orthopedic doctor and yep. then like that doctor will either be like we need to chop your foot off or go see <laughs> yeah. mike or whatever yeah yeah so orthopedic they're surgeons right so Good. that's yeah. what they do and that's what they're best at so when you go mm -hmm. see someone like that if you're not a surgical candidate they're going to turn around and most likely send you to therapy somewhere whether they have okay. A therapist in house, or they own their own therapy clinics, depending on what state you're in, or they'll send you to a facility like mine. So mm -hmm. we refer to um, orthopedics all the time. If we're not getting the results we want, or if we see any red flags, like if I'm assessing your foot injury and I think mm -hmm. you might have um, torn a ligament or you might have a stress fracture, you know, then we need some diagnostic testing, like an MRI yeah. or CT scan or bone scan, something. We as physical therapists can't order that. So we call them okay. red flags. So we find mm -hmm. if we feel we need more testing or we need definitely a surgical consult or an MD opinion on something because it's just not, doesn't seem right or it's not responding, then we'll go send you off to a specialist. And okay. you know, I've been doing this for like 20 years in my area. So I know if I've got a foot person I need help with, I know who to go to. If I get a knee person, I know who to send that to. If it's a shoulder, I know who to send that to. Oh, uh, um, okay. But because in general, you want to find someone who special, specializes in that area. There's you know, podiatrists mm -hmm. who only do foot and ankle. There's um, foot and ankle specialists who are orthopedically trained, orthopedic surgeons. Then you get orthopedic mm -hmm. surgeons that only do hips and knees or only do shoulders and knees. So um, you want to try to find someone that's got that experience. But gotcha. I think it's a better approach to get there through like uh, the therapist because 99% of the time you don't need them. But a lot of people go through that doctor route to get back, to get into therapy. Right, where, and it's just like another extra step yeah, and it's just time wasted, whereas 99% of the time you're going to end up in our office anyway, and mm -hmm. you can come directly to us without wasting that. And then if, if the therapist is well-trained and experienced, then we can do a good evaluation, and then you know, we know enough. We, we, we stay in our lane, mm -hmm. for a better way to Got describe it. it. So if, I, if it's something that's not, I know I can't help or no one on my team can help, then I will refer up the ladder a little bit. Got it. So quick question. I don't know if you'd be able to answer this, but is there any orthopedic doctor who does head, shoulders, knees, and toes? <laughs> yes, there, there are. There are few. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I, I just had to do that. Um, 
That's <laughs> anyway. a, that's like a, a generalist in the uh, osteopathic world. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> so we talk chiropractor. We talk like ortho. Yeah. So massage therapy, right? So you guys do like a lot of soft tissue work as it is. Are there that's certain good. situations where you're like, you need to like get this thing worked out and go see like a legit massage therapist um yeah again there's a lot of overlap depending on how the therapist is trained like i've got a lot of soft tissue training under my belt um mm -hmm. using instruments in my hands because the population yeah. working with runners you need to have that so do i do as much massage as a massage therapist who's my age probably not so could they mm -hmm. get a better release out of tissues with their hands possibly but the biggest difference yeah. is they're not they're not trained to assess and diagnose because gotcha. uh, they're not considered in the medical world like a licensed medical professional it's, mm -hmm. it's sad that they're not but they're kind of classified if you look at them legally they're classified like salons if people do interesting like nails. a spa or something yeah yeah like okay they, they have the i think they have the same licensing board as um anestheticians and people who do facials and nails and that type of thing uh, which i don't think does them a, a good service i think it's a different level of service, um, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't go there first. Uh, we we have a massage therapist. We've had two or three that work for us that will see patients mm -hmm. here, and we've got a, um, a guy right in our building who's really good. And this like, massage therapist around the world refer people to. We we'll usually get mm -hmm. them over there towards the end of their recovery or as part of their maintenance plan. But if you're hurt, okay. a therapist is a better way to go to get you through that injury process and get you back. Um, faster and a little bit safer in my opinion. Right, because you'll get on there with that dry needle and the uh, grasping tools. Yeah, I mean, we have, we have a little more equipment, a little more options, we have different modalities. You know, we have more training in the healing process so we can kind of assess at you know, what level this injury is and how soon can mm -hmm. you go and run. But you know, as a skilled massage therapist develops, and gets those um, gets those skills on the job. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I still think going to a, a, a licensed medical professional first to get that diagnosis and assessment is usually a better route. Not always the best, but I, that's the safest way to go. I do. I do have to get. I want to try the Graston thing because I've never. I've never done that. We've never. Maybe that's another coffee talk. We'll Graston. Dude. Yeah, dude. That would be painful. <laughs> I hear. Well. No, if you, if you if anything can be painful if you do it rough enough, right? <laughs> uh, right. It's not too bad. No, it's not bad. It's not too bad. Needle, All right. Nah, you'll be fine. All right, cool. You're I can handle it. Can handle it. Yeah, you can handle it. So, can we All talk right. about one other one other avenue? Oh, totally. So yeah, totally. Outside. So, yeah, yeah. like the ER or the the walk-in clinics. Yes, right? they, see, that's the thing. I have a pal who I won't say any names, but okay. ankle injury, like Achilles stuff. And no matter how many times I tell her, or him, sorry, um, to go see, yes. uh, to go see you, yeah. I get like, oh, I can't, I'm busy, like I have work and all that. And then she goes to a walk-in, and or he, sorry, she or he goes to a walk-in, and then we don't know. next thing you know, they're like, oh, you got like this growth, and we have to like cut it off with surgery or something. Oh. So, yeah. Yeah. So, you, so you, froze like, up, you froze up there for a second, but um, I think you're talking about the he, he or she ends up going to the walk-in. Yeah, they go to the walk-in, and then the walk-in say, like says, "Ah, oh, you got like this weird thing that we gotta cut off or something," you know, yeah, that's like a weird, growth yeah. on your Achilles or something or whatever. So they're like, "You gotta get surgery." This, and that's this is a like, true story. This is a true story. Holy cow. Um, they're like, okay, you got this Achilles and it's like rubbing and it's like causing bone to grow or something. Yeah, and she's got the we pump need to. Pump back there. He or she <laughs> has the pump pump. He or she has the pump, the pump pump. So pump now, pump, yeah. like, that's the answer, right? So, like, she's got her answer and now it's like, or he's got her, his answer and they got to get that <laughs> surgery, you know? T tell her to call me. <laughs> I've, I have so many times. No, so, yeah, but here's the thing with that, too. No one should ever with a running injury or something non-traumatic like that and non-life threatening no one should ever rush into surgery without trying conservative management first right because most likely she's getting a bony buildup on her calcaneus or heel bone from extra mm -hmm. tension it could she could have been growing her whole life and now it's big enough where it's probably rubbing in her shoe and it hurts 
and there's stuff we can do for that. I have I have had people end up having the surgery, and it's no walk in the park with a recovery. It's tough. Yeah. Uh, but no one, if you go that route to the the ER or walk in first, fine, get their advice, but always still get a conservative management opinion uh, yeah. before you take any crazy steps like that. Okay. Just going back, back to the ER number. and the walk in. I mean, they just want to make sure you don't die while you're there. That's their goal. <laughs> right. 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 Make, yeah. make sure you don't die and make sure that there's nothing serious going on. And they, they're mm -hmm. too busy. Like, they don't want to have to deal with it much, you know. But there right. are times where people go in for something simple like that. And then, God, they find a tumor in there or something is more medical. Um, right. So, yeah, maybe it was a good, a good thing for that person to get in to see it, get a um, doctor's eyes on there right away. But again, all those things we we can triage and get people to the right care if you go the the, the more conservative route with us first. Gotcha. So your advice is always try, well, get some different opinions, right? So yes. like, like a second opinion is not a bad thing. Never and bad. Um, yeah, if you're and not like, getting better, but if you're mm -hmm. if you're getting better, like if you go see the chiropractor and you're getting better, cool. Awesome. Cool. You you picked the right treatment for that injury, right? If you're seeing a therapist, right. you're getting better. Good choice. But if you're not getting better, or if someone's like throwing around injections or surgeries, or you can't run for six months, or major life changes or major events, yeah, mm -hmm. I'd get two if not three opinions. Right. I had right. two. I've had two orthopedic surgeries, and I saw four doctors before I decided to have them who's, who was going to do it. Yeah, yeah. I think that's. I think that's always wise. And I, I always like try to at least hear where people have like bunions and stuff, like try to tell them like avoid the surgery as long as you can um, until it gets to a point where you got to get it done. Because like yeah. I hear it's pretty rough. Surgery is never like an easy thing. No, no. And most of the time that's the sound advice. And you say until you can't live the life you want to live, then it's time to go in every mm -hmm. once in a while, depending on the injury you might be better off doing it sooner than later if that's going to be the inevitable option because mm -hmm. you could take something that's operable and could be a minimal to moderate recovery and traumatic event now yep. if you keep shredding that tissue or damaging it more now you're looking at major surgery that can sometimes yeah. become inoperable um, yeah yeah but those are very rare um mm -hmm. but yeah you know, and i've had people who have just like built say the surgery or recovery time around like their life so like if they're a teacher and they have to get a surgery they'll do it in the summer when they have time to recover yeah. like that type of stuff so yeah, there's, there's no good time to do it but you got to fit it in for less yeah the least obstructive to your life right cool well i hope that was helpful for folks i hope so too that's a good talk um i gotta yeah i gotta wrap this sucker up but uh yeah wrap it up thank you so much for coming on here mike and thank you to everybody who's listening and watching and all that fun stuff always fun and uh i will be back here next week are you sure i'm gonna try <laughs> i i was here crying by myself in fetal position on the floor waiting for you to pick up the phone <laughs> <laughs> and i was like hey, fit some of her shoes i'm like just come on just get the shoes i gotta go yeah, uh, can't but, process, right? no exactly right yeah. so sorry about that back no this worries. week back next week and uh we'll have another fun topic to talk about sounds good all right thanks man see we'll you, see ya take care take care what's up friend